After experiencing the incredible psychoactive effects of the Amanita muscaria, I was curious to try this again and really utilize the benefits of this tool. This time, I would be prepared for the loss of motor control and perhaps all sense of reality. This would allow me to make better use of the beginning and ending stages of the trip. Once the effects had worn off from the first trip, I noticed a small change in general mentality and thought patterns, but due to the after trip being thrown into survival mode and not being able to properly digest the experience, I believe some of the beneficial digestion of the experience did not happen. I was left feeling there was more to the long term effects of this mushroom. So, uh, 10 days later, I decided to have another round with the Amanita muscaria. I picked about 10 medium sized caps and this time I wasn't able to give them to a friend so they could dry them out in an oven. My only choice was to dry them out over a fire and this is a very very delicate process because of course the fire is very hot and you don't want to burn them but you want to dry them out. And this whole process I started at about 1 p.m. in the afternoon and it took 10 hours of consistent monitoring and flipping them over before I was convinced that they were dry enough to be safe to eat. Uh, so this was already quite a mission just to get them to this stage but it was interesting to, to do it this way. It's an interesting experience. So this time I was going to be embarking alone and I was very grateful for the pre-trip preparations I made. I set up my tent in the exact spot from the last trip I had and I made it to be tripper friendly. I knew what this mushroom could do and I was not going to be caught in the same situation as last time. I also brought my notepad with me and I wrote a trip report. I set aside a whole day and begun at about 11am. Again, I started with a small opening ceremony with incense, a candle and the Palo Santo bark. I quickly consumed half of the 15 grams and this time the nausea was much stronger and I felt that if I continued to eat I would for sure throw up. I think what I ate and did the day before had an impact on this but I am not sure. There is much about this mushroom I still do not know and why the nausea seems to be stronger and why some days it's not. So, after about 45 minutes, I instantly noticed increased creativity. And it wasn't long before I had written a whole song. And I'd only written about two songs before this. And it just came to me so fast. And it was um, just this great flow. It was like the creative channels had just been opened. So that was very interesting already. And I just got started and that had happened. So... That was pretty cool. And I was ready for the effects this time. And instead of zooming around in the bush like a madman trying to find some more mushrooms like last time, this time I channeled my energy into create events. And I believe that was uh, a very good idea. It was as if, again, I was using more of my brain, but this time I actually was using my brain effectively. So that's good. I began to get quite excited to discover more what this mushroom could do and I was eagerly anticipating what the day would bring for me. I decided to go for a walk to grab my phone and record my new song. By the time I had walked about 20 minutes, I had got my blood flowing and was hit by a stronger wave of effects and begun to notice again slight loss of motor control. I then decided I did not need my phone and perhaps the walk was good just to get things moving. It was now about 1pm. When I got back to my tent, I lay down and I started to meditate. When I did this, I noticed very clearly that there was a battle over my thoughts, with one being positive and supporting, the other thought loops being negative and destructive. I had to very consciously fight for control over my mind, to be on the positive thought loops. Once I got a hold of, hold of my mind, I began to repeat positive supporting affirmations very quickly. And I felt as I had a connection to my subconscious and was deeply rewriting subconscious programming. And I actually began to shout quite loudly some of these affirmations. 
and I believe this was uh, a good way to start as it created a positive feedback loop and um, I believe having experience with meditation and knowing about the subconscious was very very useful in this situation because perhaps if you didn't have this knowledge and you begun to get on a negative spiral that could be quite serious and that could um, really not just the whole day but really damage you for a long time until he's able to repair the damage so I was very grateful to have that knowledge the deeper I got into the meditation the more it felt as if I was leaving my body or my consciousness was just above my body but still attached I then decided to do some visualizations for clearing and energizing my body what was very interesting was how responsive my body was wherever I would focus my attention I would feel my thoughts very strongly something which I have only experienced in a similar way before when I have focused my mind for long periods in meditation or qigong and I wrote in my notepad how the potential for healing with these mushrooms are absolutely incredible so my body was very very responsive to anything I would think again that could be very dangerous but it also could be hugely beneficial and I could um, create pleasure in my body just by thinking it which was very very interesting and perhaps say if you have an energetic blockage somewhere in your body if you were able to focus your mind for long enough um, on these mushrooms maybe you could clear such a blockage but who knows and again that's definitely would be possible without the mushrooms so it's just they act like an amplifier I again went deeper and begun to have interesting revelations one that was that we do create our own reality every second we are on the planet with every thought, feeling and emotion but we are also co-creating together something I already knew on the conscious level but this felt like I was tapping into a more embodied knowing another thought line I came across was that the best reality we can create when we die is that we experience another level of evolution the Ra material talks about this in a beautiful way going through the densities of evolution and the seven densities of this universe and the how prog progression is possible throughout also there are a few different sources on the internet which talk about this uh, Tom Montauk's website has some amazing material on this I would highly recommend you check that out and that's montauk.net so we would have to qualify for such a reality to be able to get there and qualifying in this sense referring again to the raw materials interpretation would mean you'd have to either be strongly polarized towards service to self or service to others um, if you're sort of in the middle ground then you wouldn't qualify so to speak and you would repeat this level of existence which nothing wrong with that you would just die reincarnate probably on this planet unless the conditions on this planet are not suitable anymore for this level of reality which could well happen in the future but we'll see about that I then began to think about what would be the best possible reality for humanity as a collective to experience this led me to a timeline reality split I have written about this on my website so you can find a bit more information there and to summarize it is where the collective human experience differs so much from shall we say the spiritually alive and the spiritually dead the reality has no choice but to split the timeline and create two earths in effect I will not go into more detail on this huge topic right now but if you are interested I encourage you to read my website and you will find other sources of information that talk about just this so what was interesting is I began to feel the emotional pain that would come with having members of my family not make it to the positive spiritually alive split and will come to suffering the apocalyptic fate of the spiritually dead this was very intense however I saw from a higher perspective that their suffering would be temporary and as a small play price to pay in the grander universal spectrum of things and would allow for not only the survival of the species but would grant the possibilities of incredible evolution beyond what I can imagine instead of all of humanity falling into the abyss the spiritually alive would go on so far this trip was showing to be astounding although not transcendental 
perhaps this is what we can access when we use more of my mind. I also had the thought line that this mushroom is just a shortcut for meditation, seeing as meditating also increased the effects. Focusing the mind really is powerful. I then began to think about what the best reality I could create for myself was, and this was interesting because the first things I thought about were a big beautiful house with a big beautiful view, with a beautiful sexy woman, and I had lots of money. I was completely immersed in this material fantasy for about 10 to 15 minutes, until I snapped out of it and realised this is not what I truly want. What I was just creating from was the matrix conditioning and programming stemming from a lifetime of conditioning and instinctual drives. I also had the embodied experience of how people can become completely absorbed by this line of thinking and unless it is questioned, people would assume it to be their own minds, thoughts and desires. This is actual reality for millions and millions of people on this planet, but I mention this not to judge, just to understand and accept. I have been wondering recently how many people's thoughts are actually their own thoughts. They stem from their soul or their, their higher mind. And how much of it does come from the, the conditioning and the society and all of this stuff. I, I'm not sure that many people actually truly think for themselves, which is very interesting to think about. And taking into account the reality creation ability of every human on this planet, if no, a very small amount of people are actually thinking for themselves, then what are they thinking from? And then if you know that uh, people have this ability, and then you can mould their minds to accept your version of reality, which happens to benefit you a lot, then you can see how the matrix sets itself up on this planet through people's minds. I then switch to a more harmonious and positively reality creation for myself and channeled a life path which would cover all the mechanical matrix actions I would need to take to manifest the life of my dreams and not the matrix's dreams. A reality that would also greatly benefit the evolution of consciousness. I wrote at the end of this section that the divine's plan is to evolve consciousness and this plan is in alignment with that. This plan only covers the basic mechanical actions without any of the beautiful divine syn synchronistic play that comes from living in the divine. Exciting stuff indeed. It was about 2pm and I had my first urination. I knew the procedure and quickly gulped down half. I then had a quick swim in the nearby stream and had a strong message to go for it and drink the rest. Down it went. It was very salty. I went for another short walk and begun to really notice loss of motor control. Walking became a little bit difficult and I went back to my tent and found writing also become harder. I was glad I did this because after a while it becomes hard to actually recognize where you are and I can imagine being in the bush you could get lost very very fast. So the trip become deeper by this stage and I lay down to meditate again. I was going into some of the pain felt throughout my body. I was then approaching this pain from a place of no fear, no aversion, objectivity and love. When I did this and focused my mind, I noticed my pain would decrease. I also wrote in my notepad how we are all connected and when you experience, for example, love, you experience it for all of humanity, the same for pain. What I was finding interesting about pain is that the fear of pain is actually far greater than the pain itself. And so much fear of pain comes from a fear of dying. And if we take into account my first experience, if that really is what happens when we die, then death is absolutely nothing to be feared. It's actually an incredibly beautiful process and something to be prepared for. But who knows if that's really what happens. So when you are going through pain from a loving place, you're making it easier for humanity to evolve. By adding to the collective consciousness that we are all immersed in, the pain is nothing to fear. This lessens the load for humanity in total, and would have effects on unseen levels and ripples for human consciousness. I began to see and understand 
how there is a war on consciousness, thinking, thoughts and emotions, and that the darkness at the moment seems to have more of an influencing power due to the spiritual dark age that humanity has been going through, which ties into many factors, one being the procession of the equinox where Earth revolves around the galaxy and spend time, spends time in more etherically alive parts of the galaxy. And, of course, when there is more etheric energy, people have more energy. And so, more psychic abilities would be more active, and illness would be a lot less prevalent, amongst many other factors. And I was experiencing how there are three places that thoughts come from. There's you, there's the positivity or the divine, and negativity or the matrix. The darkness has more of an influencing power at the moment, although this could change if more people tune into the divine. Perhaps that's what many cultures around the world intuitively picked up upon, that this time in our history is one where there is potential for great shift. How exactly this takes place is open for speculation, but wherever you look, the indicators are there. What is the best possible reality you can think of for humanity to experience? Continuing this, I began to see how when someone on your path projects their pain and suffering onto you, you can, if possible, you alchemically transform their pain into love, which is easier to do if you come from a place of deep self-love and love yourself. This is vast in itself, as it requires practice and discernment to see if it is worth your time to invest in trying to transform someone's negativity into positivity, ensuring you have vast love for yourself and your reality is always a good anchor point and if you cannot physically or mentally do something for someone the least you can do is project your love onto him and her and then walk away from any draining situation your personal vibration is where you ultimately make the most difference but as a side project you can help alleviate and lessen the suffering of others with this practice remember when you do this you do it for all of humanity having Positive reality creation affects all of humanity on unseen levels and ties into the Bringers of the Dawn's book concept of people making a difference just by being here. That doesn't mean we just sit here and think positive thoughts. We still have to play our part physically in this reality. But don't forget about the spiritual aspects as well and how important it is to be in control of your thoughts and your emotions. So the trip at this stage began to magnify in levels and writing became harder. I was coming across flashing thought lines and writing them down as quickly as I could. It's very interesting because I believe you are entering in a higher state of consciousness and then when you meditate it gets stronger and then you are able to receive information from maybe your higher self or your higher mind or a combination of this. Some of the thought lines I wrote were, when you properly meditate you die, enlightenment is death. It feels as this this mushroom is a tool to leave the body. When you die, you collectively experience the human collective consciousness. Most people die from heart attack or disease. Did I have to experience that? And that was related to my first trip where I died from, it must have been a heart attack or whatever it was, it was excruciating pain in my chest. If I was to experience reality as a lucid dream, will have to have incredibly clear thoughts. Love is the ultimate key to transcend the matrix. Love, love, love. Thoughts have real effects on people. I am experiencing all of the negative thoughts, feelings, emotions that humanity experiences. Breathe all the time. Breathe love into your heart and have sex with love. Then, I really thought I was going to have to die. But this time, I would be conscious of this, instead of the first time, when it was a dream. I wrote on my notepad that, Enlightenment is death, and I love you all. I thought I would have to die to help humanity, and I was totally ready to die for you all. The idea being is that I would experience the pain of dying from a place of love, and lessen the collective pain and fear that humanity has of death. Then I began to get into Tantra, which is interesting because other than this short talk 
called the academic overview of Tantra. I have very little knowledge on this subject. I was writing about supposedly the most pleasurable experience that is available to man is to orgasm whilst practicing Tantra breathing into the woman you love. This combines the mind, heart, sexuality. And that is enlightenment. Again, I cannot validate whether this is actually true. Many things I experience, again, I can't say all of it is 100% true. But it's at least very interesting to think about. I was coming to the knowledge, and this relates to Qigong and your three dantians, which are the three sections of your body. You have the head, the chest and the belly. And it's all to do with energy. And apparently what I experienced was when you run out of energy in one of these centers, then you die. And that could also be extended to the chakras, that perhaps when one of your chakras stops spinning, then you die of a ailment related to that specific area. And I came across the thought line that being crucified is possibly the most painful way to die because it cuts off energy for all three of your centers, whilst people die usually from only one center being cut off. The last thought lines I write are Create love through yourself. The most power is to love yourself. Every time you masturbate over porn, you feed the matrix control system. To die on a cross is the opposite of a tantra orgasm into the woman you love. I have to die for Jesus. Thinking I now have to die for humanity, the last thing I write is I love you all. What happened after that? could only be described as experienced the pain of dying over and over again. I must have died about 10 to 15 times and was experienced the pain of dying for each of the chakras for every time I would approach the pain from a meditative loving state which lessened the effect of dying and the total pain. This was absolutely incredibly intense and it went on for a very long time. It felt as if I was perhaps pulling from the collective pain of humanity, or it could be that I was experiencing past life deaths. I am not sure on this. My body would actually flail around as if I was actually dying, but would relax, and as soon as I held my focus on love. I am not sure how long I continued this for, but it seemed to become dark very fast, and before I knew it, it was completely black, and I decided to return home which was much easier this time with the light of the moon. I got back at around 9.30pm, had some good food and proceeded to wrap myself up in bed and write a bit of this uh, article. An interesting side note is that about two weeks before this experience I was in a very long meditation and focused on pain in my body. After intense focusing, I began to thrash around my body and experience some form of release, which ended in seeing black flashing in my vision and arch arching my back, and I was sort of screaming with no noise coming out. I was not sure what I experienced, but I felt very good after this with a lot of energy, as if perhaps I had cleared something. This was the same experience I had at the peak of my dying experience on these mushrooms. The connection I am still not exactly sure on but ties into my previous thought on how these mushrooms are a shortcut for meditation and how uh, I believe it's very important to have a background of meditation to really get the benefits of these mushrooms. These mushrooms are an amazing teacher if used correctly and I cannot overstate the potential for humanity within this fungi. Perhaps the next steps in evolution could be tapped into with this mushroom, but who knows.